I know that we're different. I mean, he's the bad boy, and I'm the nerdy, not like other girls girl, and you know, he's so angry and possessive, and a little bit too Republican for my taste, but I, I can fix him. No. No. You can't. Sorry. Hi, my name is Darren, and I'm gonna tell you why you cannot fix them. A common trope in romance is the, but I can fix them trope, which reflects a very real and untrue belief that entering a relationship where you expect to change and or fix your partner through the power of love uh, will produce a desired effect. Or that just by being in a relationship, your partner will dramatically change to fit your needs and desires in order to produce a successful relationship. The concept that someone can be influenced by someone else into changing their behavior is not unheard of or necessarily necessarily untrue. However, the concept that a romantic partnership would be successful under the pretense that one member of the coupling changed dramatically for the other person is false. There are so, so many popular examples of this, such as, to list a few, Bella and Edward in Twilight, Chuck and Blair in Gossip Girl, Damon and Elena in The Vampire Diaries, Anna and Christian in Fifty Shades of Grey. Hell, even Belle in The Beast, and not even in Beauty and the Beast, but in those direct-to-video, like, terrible midquel movies that I refuse to recognize as canon, in those. I just wanted to make you happy. I should have known you'd never be anything but a beast. The through line through all of those relationships you may have noticed, no matter how shippable you may find them, and I find some of them shippable, uh, is that they're all deeply unhealthy relationships. While change in a relationship is natural and should be expected in any healthy relationship, psychologically speaking, low relationship quality has been linked to a disproportionate amount of change expected from one partner over the other over an extended period of time. I'll clarify though that requesting a measurable change in behavior from your partner to meet their current needs, like wanting a partner to do more work around the house or to be more affectionate, uh, is fairly normal when communicated properly uh, and can be a sign of healthy change that benefits the relationship. However, if those needs are not met, not communicated, or are requested at the detriment of your partner, for example, if partner one requests more sex and partner two is uncomfortable with that, but partner one keeps requesting it, it can be a sign that a relationship needs more work or some outside help. You may have noticed that I have been referencing uh, actual psychological research and scholarly papers Pipers for this video. I've done some real research on this one, so if you're not gonna listen to me, listen to these guys. They're like actual like psychological experts. I'm just the mouthpiece. What I am referring to as unhealthy is the expectation that a member of a romantic partnership change parts of their personality or core beliefs in order to be in the partnership, or that the partnership will change them. A person does not often change their personality or beliefs because it's desired by others, uh, nor do they often change who they are for a relationship. The instances in which this does happen are usually a sign of, like, really poor psychological health in the person that has drastically changed, and sometimes physical health as well. To give you an example, of an unhealthy relationship where one person swears up and down that the relationship is changing them or that they're going to change for the other person is with Anna and Christian in the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy, specifically in Fifty Shades Darker. If I were to summarize Fifty Shades of Grey for you in a few words, I would say it's an abusive relationship disguised as a dom-sub BDSM relationship between Anastasia Steele, the sub, and Christian Grey the Dom. What is actually happening, which is admitted out loud by Christian Grey in Fifty Shades Darker, is that he's not actually a dominant looking for a submissive to constantly be under his thumb, but rather he's searching for a brunette that he can smack around because he's actually a sadist. 
right? In the first movie slash book, Fifty Shades of Grey, Anna leaves Christian because she realizes that this dom sub lifestyle just isn't for her. She doesn't understand why Christian wants to smack her around all the time and beat her in bed, so she decides to leave him. The second book slash movie opens with Christian essentially begging Anna to come back to him, promising that he's going to change. Um, spoiler alert, he doesn't. Christian says over and over and over again, I'm changing, you're changing me. In fact, a bunch of other people tells Anna, he's changing, you're totally fixing him. The thing about Christian is that he never actually changes his behavior. He kind of just gaslights her into thinking that he's changing by making minute progress in small areas, such as taking her out on dates or letting her touch his no-no zone. <laughs> He'll prove it, like, maybe once before regressing back to previous behaviors such as being possessive and controlling and abusive and not giving her full consent over what she's doing by not informing her about what she's doing. A person can only really change their personality or how they treat others or their core belief system healthily when they pursue personal change on their own volition, which may be influenced or inspired by outside forces, but ultimately the choice is up to them. They don't change for other people, they have to make that choice for themselves and only for themselves. The process of changing oneself is also not as simple as Christian and this trope would have you believe. Simply wanting to change or promising to change won't change you, nor will falling in love. But rather committing yourself to a long process of completing behavioral challenges and implementing change one day at a time. That actually creates progress. So you can't actually just make empty promises. You have to actually pursue those promises. You have to make a plan. You have to take some actionable steps. If someone does decide to pursue this goal of personal change, the best thing for their partner to do is to be responsive to their desire to change and support them through the various trials that they will inevitably go through. Not to try to enact change in their partner on their own or take the responsibility onto themselves to monitor and coach them through this serious shift in their life. You are not their keeper. They are their keeper. They are their own person. An example of a relationship where one person decides to change on their own and is supported by their partner on their journey to change is actually with Tony and Pepper from Iron Man and the rest of the MCU. I know people don't like Tony, but just bear with me, okay? After experiencing a very traumatic kidnapping by a terrorist group and witnessing innocent lives killed by the weapons he helped manufacture, Tony decides to change his life to better serve the world he's helped destroy. Sure, he becomes Iron Man to do that, but he also becomes more concerned about the welfare of the world, the environment, inspiring productive inventiveness in the youth. And while he's always liked Pepper, she never was the reason why he wanted to change. He sought this change for himself, by himself. Pepper notices this change in him, and while rightfully being nervous about him becoming a superhero and constantly putting his life on the line, uh, she's ultimately very supportive about his personal growth. She holds him accountable for his behavior, confronts him when he acts like a jerk to her or to somebody else. She also recognizes when he does a positive thing, and ultimately is just there for him on his journey to becoming a team-playing hero from a self-centered playboy. I do want to highlight what is healthy, not just what is unhealthy. And what is healthy is the expectation that change on either side of the relationship is inevitable and should be expected as you learn and grow as a couple, discover new things about yourself and your partner, and experience new things as life goes on and allowing that to effectively change you. Change is a normal part of life and when allowed to happen naturally can lead to an even stronger bond between you and your partner as you change together. The best example I could pull for this is actually from The Legend of Vox Machina, which is an animated adaptation of the first campaign of a D&D podcast called Critical Role. Yes, I'm a nerd, but I'm a nerd for quality quality content, and this is quality content, just hear me out. The relationship I'm referring to is actually between Percy and Vex. I have Percy right here, he's my favorite character in the show. <laughs> just let you perch right there for right now. Spoiler alert, the relationship between the two does not become romantic in the first season of the animated show. However, it will become romantic because it does so in the podcast. I'm expecting some Percy and Vex moments in the second season, critical role. Take notes. In the podcast, Percy and Vex both desire change for themselves. They're not motivated to change for each other, but rather they want to seek change for their own betterment. Vex wants to be more open and forgiving as to not hold so much hatred for herself and for the people who have done her wrong. She doesn't want to be motivated by anger, but by love. She wants to know that when she's killing something, she's killing because she wants to protect her family and her friends 
not because she wants vengeance. After being confronted with her own demons, she ultimately makes that journey for herself, and it's very painful, and she goes through a lot of, like, self-loathing. Meanwhile, Percy is there for her the entire time, reminding her that she is actually a good person, she just needs to kind of work on herself a little bit. <laughs> While Percy helps her with her self-worth and self-image, ultimately it's Vex who makes the decision that she wants to be better, that she wants to better herself, and she makes the necessary steps in order to do that. As for Percy, and this is very visible in the first season of the animated show, he starts off as a vengeful loner madman <laughs> with the selfish desire to quench his bloodlust towards the people who murdered his entire family and tortured him for days on end, with no regard for his own life or his friends' lives, and ends up a leader and a family man, an encourager of curiosity and inventiveness. He too becomes motivated to change himself in order to do well in the world to oppose the bad that he's done. Vex and Percy change each other in the exact same way that the rest of their friends change them. Just by being in proximity of people that they care about, they are evolving. But they ultimately make the choice to change and become better people on their own, for their own betterment, and they support each other on that journey. They admit how much they m admire the other person for how much they've grown and changed and been able to forgive themselves and others. They hold each other accountable, they give each other advice, and they ultimately root for each other to be the best that they can be simply because they want to see each other succeed. To conclude, change is inevitable, but there is no fixing your partner. They are how they are, and how they are will change with or without you. But if you want it to be with you, then you have to love the core of who they are first. Them changing shouldn't be the sole condition in which you enter a relationship, but rather an expectation you hold not only for them, but for yourself. To quote a property we all know and love, obviously Frozen, <laughs> in their hit song, Fixer Upper. We're not saying you can change him, cause people don't really change. We're only saying that love's a force as powerful as strength. Understanding that people are flawed and that there's nothing you can do about that but love them flaws and all That's love. That's romance. Any relationship will change you But you want it to be for the right reasons You want it to be because that person feels so loved and accepted by you that they can't help but be affected by how you've impacted their life There's no forcing something like that. There's no fixing someone. So no, you can't fix them But they'll change And so will you Thank you so much for watching, and make sure to love each other. Goodbye.